All right, so the next topic we're gonna to start looking at are measures of variation, what it's called. So measures of variation. In this one, we're gonna talk about the range and the interquartile range. And uh, I'll explain exactly what those mean. Uh, and really, it's just a measure of how spread out the data is. And that's a useful thing to know. So first, we're gonna talk about the range. So the range is just the maximum value minus the minimum value. So the biggest advantage of this, that it's really easy to calculate. And um, biggest disadvantage, I guess, is that it can be affected by outliers. So we're gonna have the same numbers we were looking at for um, calculating our averages, 12 and 14. So these are the six numbers. The range in this case, like we said, is simply the maximum minus the minimum. So it's gonna be 14 minus three is equal to 11. And, and that's it, so the range is 11. So that's how spread out the data is. And um, so the, that, that's fine for uh, these numbers here. But say, for example, we had these numbers, which is three, five, six, seven, 12, 14, and then 100. So we have, what's this called? An outlier. So in this case, our range is gonna be 100 minus three is equal to 97. So that, like, if we saw just the range is equal to 97, we would think that the data is spread out across 97 different numbers, that it's quite far spread out. But that's not the case at all. The data is all within 11 numbers, and then there's one massive outlier. So that's where the range falls down. It's not very good. Um, when you have to talk about outliers. But there is another um, form of, or another measure of variation which can kind of combat this, and that's called the interquartile range. So I'll write some notes on that now. So here I have some notes quickly drawn out. So the interquartile range, uh, and the way we calculate that is by taking the upper quartile value and minusing it from the lower quartile value, or sorry, upper, the upper minus lower. So I'll explain exactly what these quartile values are now in a second. Uh, but first, I'll just explain some things about the interquartile range. So it's the range of the middle 50% of the data, and it's not affected by outliers. So it tells us where the middle bit of the data is, which is quite useful if we want to get kind of means and averages. Uh, and again, yeah, like I said, it's, it's not affected by outliers. Okay, so what exactly is a quartile? So I'll write that down, because um, that's quite important to calculate the interquartile range. So if we take the same numbers, we're going to add a few more, 3, 5, 6, 7, 12, 14, 16, and 17, okay? I'm gonna go get an orange pen. So we can, we can split the data up into kind of four bits. So wait, I will split first in half, like this. So the first four and the second four, and then we can also split these halves into half. So we have two and two, so it's our, we have three and five, we have six and seven, and then we have 12 and 14, and 16 and 17, okay? So we know that the median value is between seven and 12. It's this one here in the middle for th this set of numbers. And also, what we can say, so we call that sometimes Q of two. We can also say that this is Q of one, the value that's gonna take this middle here, and then Q of three, the value that's gonna take this bit here. So that Q one is the lower quartile value, and Q3 is the upper quartile value. So if we were to calculate those, I'll just squeeze it out here. So the quartile value is gonna be between five and six, because there's no number there. If there was an odd number, there might be some, and between 14 and 16. So um, I'll just say five plus six divided by two, so this is gonna be Q1, which is gonna be equal to 5.5, and then Q3, is gonna be 14 plus 16 divided by two, which is just gonna be 15. So the, I'll say IQ or, which is interquartile range, is gonna be Q3 minus Q1, which is the upper quartile value minus the lower quartile value. And quartile kind of comes from quarter because we've kind of put it into four quarters, yeah? Um, which in this case is gonna be 15 minus 5.5 which is just gonna be 9.5. So that's the range of the middle 50% of the data. So I guess another way of calling this Q1 and Q3 is that Q1 is one quarter of the way up, and then Q3 is three quarters of the way up. And um, so that's where kind of the Q3 and Q1 and the quartile comes from. So I'll just give you one more example where we have slightly more um, numbers in the list, and it, it might be a little bit hard to split it up. So I'll scroll down. Uh, take this down if you are taking notes. I'm just gonna erase it to make more space. 
So say that this is our new list of numbers. So this isn't too big, it's not that we couldn't count it out, uh, but there's just an easier way of doing it. So there's a formula for Q1 and a formula for Q3. So Q1 is equal to one over four by one plus N. So sorry, that's kind of a bad way of phrasing it. It's not a formula, it's how to find which number it is. So if you go one over four times one plus N, where N is, in this case, it's equal to 10, it's equal to how many numbers are in your list. So in this case, n is equal to 10. That'll find which number is Q1, okay? So in this case, we go one over four multiplied by 11, because n is equal to 10, we add that to one. So if you put that into your calculator, you'll find out that it is equal to 2.75. So that means we have to get um, the average between the second and the third number to find our Q1. So this is gonna be our second number, this is our third, so that means that Q1 is gonna be in the gap there. So we have to get the average of 10 and 12. So does that make sense? If we got a whole number here, uh, if we got a whole number here for our Q1, then it'd just be that number. Say the answer was two, then that would be our Q1 value. Um, but because it's 2.75, we have to get the average of the second and the third, and then I'll just go through um, Q3 as well. It's gonna be pretty much the same, except it's three over four by one plus N. So those are uh, formulas you have to learn off. I don't think they're in the tables book. So in this case, it's three over four times 11, which in our case is equal to 8.25. So we have to get the average between the eighth and the ninth um, to find our Q1 and our Q3, okay? So to do that quickly, I'll go in white. Um, Q1 is gonna be 10 plus 12 divided by two, which is equal to 11. And then Q3 is gonna be equal to our eighth and our ninth. So we'll go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So it's between 45 and 47. So that's just gonna be 46 if we uh, add them both together and divide them by two. So there's our Q1, there's our Q3. So it's a little bit quicker than counting them out, I think. And then our IQOR, which again just stands for interquartile range, is 46 minus 11, which is just gonna give us 35 as an answer. So that's our interquartile range. The middle 50% of our data um, is within 35, I guess, values of itself, of each other. So that's our video on range and interquartile range. That's all we're gonna do for that. Um, in the next video, we're gonna look at standard deviation, which is a little bit more difficult, and it's gonna come up a lot, lot more. So make sure you're comfortable with it. Anyway, if you like the videos, then um, make sure to like and subscribe, share them with friends. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.